is a very important question and I have been asked many times in UGC and other exams like the half life of the N2 is 114 years right now we will be looking at ozone which is another greenhouse gas so absorption band is at 9 micrometer if you talk about ozone so ozone absorbs at 9 micrometer and this band lies at 9 micrometer this makes it a potent greenhouse gas however this is not well mixed like other greenhouse gases and its concentration also varies from place to place which is absolutely correct the ozone varies it's different in rural area then different in urban areas also now comes halocarbons so the compounds formed by the combination of carbon halogen are called as halocarbons and these are divided into five major categories which is first chlorofluorocarbon second is HCFC hydrochlorofluorocarbon third is hydrofluorocarbon fourth is perfluorocarbon and fifth is halons so we will be studying these one by one in detail right we will be dealing them in detail one by one let's see what they are and how they impact our environment so let's suppose start with the first member of halocarbon family which is chlorofluorocarbon or cfc's so as the name suggests they have only carbon fluorine chlorine and no hydrogen atom at all the properties of chlorofluorocarbon are they are non-toxic non-flammable non-reactive because they are not soluble in water they are not removed from the atmosphere for a long time means they have a high residence time photolysis of chlorofluorocarbon give rise to chlorine radical which destroy ozone so these chlorofluorocarbon are basically the source of chlorine radical which destroy ozone so that's why they are very harmful for us when we talk about examples of chlorofluorocarbon so cfc11 which is cfcl3 and cfc12 which is cf2cl2 also called as freon or the pond so these are the good examples of chlorofluorocarbon now coming to the second category which is hcfc which is hydrofluorocarbon so as the name suggests the compound is made up of carbon fluorine chlorine and hydrogen and the presence of hydrogen atom it's reactive addition of hydrogen and cfc so the moment we call them as hydrochlorofluorocarbon so we are adding some extra hydrogen which is reactive in nature and their inertness thus hcfc have a lower lifetime than cfc's chlorofluorocarbon so because extra hydrogen which is reactive in nature have been added so these are more reactive in compared to chlorofluorocarbon an example of hydrochlorofluorocarbon is CHF2Cl which is HCFC22 now the third category which is hydrofluorocarbon as the name suggests because they do not have any chlorine because hydrofluorocarbon HFC but the global warming potential is high because they have no chlorine at all so safe for ozone so though they are safe for ozone but their global warming potential is much more higher because they, they also this hydrofluorocarbon they becomes the first choice as a refrigerant in older time but potent greenhouse gases such as CH2 FCF3 which is also called as SFC 134 the example must be remembered then perfluorocarbon perfluorocarbon is basically made up of carbon and fluorine only and they have a zero ozone uh, depleting potential but global warming potential is too high and they have a high half-life and it can be seen from global climate change chapter from Gilbert Masters the global warming potential of different chlorofluorocarbons and if we see the CFC that is chlorofluorocarbon is 50,000 years now coming to the other category which is called as halon these are made up of carbon fluorine chlorine and bromine and they have a ozone destroying 
elements called bromine and ion in them along with chlorine so halons are highly dangerous they are very dangerous because they are very reactive now let's come to the nomenclature of halocarbons so for example we took cfc115 so the steps are simple first we will be adding 90 to the number in front of cfc so the moment we add 90 to 115 it comes out to be 205 so this number 205 each number indicates something for example like 2 the first digit it indicate the number of carbon like it is having 2 carbon second digit which is 0 here it indicate the number of hydrogen and third digit like 5 it indicate the number of fluorine and rest to the valencies if remain for carbon is fulfilled by chlorine so as you can see that CFC, CFC 115 is nothing but C2F5Cl the structure is also drawn there if we took another example like CFC 134 similarly it is C2H2F4 CFC 11 which is CFCl3 CFC 113 then we have CFC 134 then halons in case of halons let us suppose we have a number like halon 1211 so first digit will indicate the number of carbon second number of fluorine third number of chlorine and fourth one is number of bromine so the formula here will be cf2clbr right So as you can see the halons 1, 2, 1, 1, halons 2, 4, 0, 2, the presentation. Now let's come to the use of halocarbons that how they can be effectively used in day-to-day -day life. So the first use is they are used in refrigeration. So as a refrigerant before chlorofluorocarbon, CFC, ammonia, CO2, isobutane or methyl chloride were used as refrigerant but as the chlorofluorocarbon evaporates under low pressure and produces cooling without any toxicity or reactivity, they are the preferred options over sorry, methane, ammonia or CO2. There is a special point that CFC12 which is nothing but CF2Cl2 is also known as DuPont or R12 is the most common refrigerant which is used in refrigeration purposes. Then we can also use the CFC as an aerosol propellant. So CFC is now replaced by isobutane and propane. CFC is also replaced by isobutane and propane. Then third use is the foam plastic or which also called as styrofoam. The white glasses which are used to have coffee and this is also called as thermacol so when liquid cfc the chlorofluorocarbon is allowed to vaporize in plastic they create tiny bubbles that makes plastic cooling and then we can use them so this was all about the chlorofluorocarbons i hope all of you understand today's lecture and hope you enjoy it next time we will start with global warming potential of different gases